What's up guys, Dave from Red Dot Shooters here and today we're going to unbox and review this site. All right guys, so as you can see, we have the Holosun EPS, which stands for Enclosed Pistol Sight. And it was a little bit hard for me to find this site right now. A lot of people are searching for it and buying them up. I was able to find one, I bought it. This was the particular model that I wanted. It comes in several different models, which we'll talk about. But just right off the bat, you can see this one is the 2 MOA dot version, which is what I wanted. And it does not have a solar panel, which saves you a little bit of money if you don't get that. So I'm really excited about this optic. And like I said, we're going to unbox it today and talk about what you get with it. So let's get started. All right, so all the uh, hollow suns are basically packaged the same way. Pull it open like that. Take off the top cover. Okay. Got your manual. Like that. Lens cloth. All right, and the good stuff here. So it does come with a few tools. Um, which will help you mount it and adjust it. This plate, I believe, is an RMR adapter. So if you have a gun with an RMR cut, which I do like right here, then you can still use the EPS right out of the box because you can use this plate to mount onto the RMR footprint and then put your EPS right on top. I actually have a gun that I had specially cut for the EPS, and I'll show you that in just a minute. So I don't need to use that, but it's really cool that they include this plate, which is a metal plate, it's not plastic, uh, with the optic. So Because the RMR footprint is the most common footprint used for pistol optics, so it's really cool that they include this with the sight, because I think most people are not going to be like me and get a whole gun milled specifically for the EPS. So that's really cool. Aside from that, we've got some screws, different sizes, which is cool that Holosun does that. They give you different sizes of screws. And now let's get to the site. So there's the model number there, EPS R2, which I think stands for the red, because you can get these in red or green and the two MOA dot rather than the multiple reticle system. These sights are always so cool to me. They're just so tiny. There's what the bottom looks like. All right, really cool. Has a battery already installed. And let me see if I could show you what the dot looks like. You've got your brightness adjustments right here. Battery compartment right here. Side loading, not on the bottom, which is important. That's a big deal for me. I pretty much don't want any optic that I have to take off just to replace the battery. So, yeah, this thing is really, really cool. I'm excited to put it on my gun. I'm excited to shoot it. Now, let's talk about it a little bit. Let's talk about what you get. So just as the name says, this is the EPS. Let's clear some of this off, actually. Enclosed pistol sight. So that's different from what you see here on my uh, G45. So this is also a Holosun, but this is the Holosun 407C X2. This is an open pistol sight. And basically, you've got uh, that lens right there in the front but in the back, there is no lens. You just have the little emitter, which shoots up the image of the reticle, and it's all open over there. So if you put your finger there, blocking the emitter, or if like a piece of mud or something like that gets in there, you won't have any image of your reticle. It won't be projecting off the glass. Now, is that a big concern? Honestly, I've used open emitters a lot, and I've never run into an issue with, um, with the emitter being blocked. 
By the way, I have a whole blog post on my website uh, explaining everything I've done with this gun. That'll be the same for all of these guns. I'll link all that in the description below if you want to find out more about how I've modded out these different guns. But as I was saying, the big difference is instead of having that open emitter, this one is closed. So you have that front lens, but you also have a rear lens and inside the emitter is protected. So it's, it's like other red dot sights that you'd have on a rifle. It's closed. And there are a few companies that are coming out with these closed emitter pistol optics right now. You've got Hollow Suns, you've got Aimpoint, you've got Steiner, um, Swamp Fox has one too. This is the one that I think looks the best <laughs> because they are kind of boxy. And this is the one that has me the most excited. Based on its price, based on its features, and based on the way it looks. So what are some of the features that you get with this optic? Well, like I said, my version is a 2 MOA dot reticle. I like a 2 MOA dot on a pistol optic. I know there's guys out there that like uh, a larger dot for many different reasons, and hey, that's cool. I'm not the greatest shooter or anything like that, but 2 MOA dot seems to work pretty well for me. It's easy to... It's easy for me to pick up and I just like it. Now you can get the EPS with the multiple reticle system. And that one is, um, that one basically gives you three different options. You have the two MOA dot. You also have the circle dot reticle with a 32 MOA circle uh, and the two MOA dot inside. And then you also can just run it with a 32 MOA circle and have nothing inside. Like I said, out of those three, my favorite option is just the two MOA dot but it is a personal preference thing. So if you like those other options or if you want to have those in your site, then the cool thing is you've got a lot of options with the EPS and, uh, and you can get one of the SKUs that gives you those reticle options. I also opted on this one to not go with the solar panel. I do like the solar panels that Holosun puts on their sites and they do work, they do back up your battery but for this one, I decided I wanted to save a little bit of money and just not have it. And I think it'll be fine because the battery life on this site is awesome. You got 50,000 hours of battery life on setting six, which is in the middle. And aside from that 50,000 hours, you also have uh, Holosense Shake Awake technology, which basically means that if your site is sitting still, like in your gun safe, it'll eventually just turn off and save the battery life. And then as soon as you pick up your gun, it'll turn on again and be ready to go. So that's a great feature. That's a, that's a feature that I think all red dots should have at this point. I've found it to be very reliable on SIG red dots and Holosun red dots. And that shake wake feature is something that I pretty much want on all of my red dot sites. Aside from that, when it does come time to change the battery, it's a side loading battery tray which is cool. And you've got a little tool, you just unscrew it and put in your battery. And the cool thing about that is you can keep it on your gun and change out your battery. You don't have to take it off and then put it back on and then re-zero your sight, which is ridiculous in my opinion. You can put your sight on, keep it there mounted and change out your battery when you need to. Maybe swap it out every year. That's what a lot of people like to do. The brightness settings get very bright on hollow sun red dots. Again, I've never used this one yet, but I have used a lot of hollow suns and they get very bright. I live in Las Vegas, so I go out shooting in the desert. During the summer months, it's extremely bright outside and I've on these hollow suns, I don't even have them on the top setting and I can easily see them even in the bright desert sun. So they get very bright. They, they definitely get bright enough for any brightness conditions out there. And on the low setting, there are some night vision compatible settings. So if you have like night vision equipment, you can use it along with that. I don't have that stuff, but I do think it's cool that it's included. Another thing I like about this site in particular and all the Hollow Sun Red Dots is that they are waterproof. They're not like aim points where you can take them scuba diving and stuff, but they're definitely waterproof enough for rain or to just be splashed with water. And that's all I really want out of a site. I'm just a civilian. I'm just a, just a dude who likes guns. I want my stuff to work if it's raining outside or snowing. And if that's the case, this thing's gonna hold up without any issues. Now let's talk about the footprint, which is kind of an interesting part of this site. So this is the full size EPS. There is an EPS carry, which is closer to the size of this one. 
which is the 507K. But basically, even though this is a, a wider sight, these two optics have the same footprint. It's, this one is just a little bit fatter. The EPS carry is a little bit slimmer like the 507K that I have right here. Again, in the description, I have a, a link to a blog post showing you what I've done with this Glock 48, if you wanna check that out. Now, like I told you before, in the box, you get an adapter plate, which works with the Trijicon RMR footprint. So, on this Glock 45, I had the slide work done by Boogeyman Customs, and they do awesome work. They also did this one for me. But on this, I had them uh, cut it for a Trijicon RMR footprint or the 507C or 407C footprint, which is the same as the RMR. So if I wanted to put the EPS on my Glock 45, I could do that because I would just use this plate and then I could stack it on top of that. But what I've actually done is had a gun specifically cut for the EPS. And that's this one. So this one is also, it's just a Glock 17 Gen 4 and uh, I had the work done by Boogeyman Customs and I asked them beforehand if they could do an optic cut for the EPS. And they said they could, they sent it back to me, I got it back a few days ago. I have not put the sight on yet to see if it fits, but hopefully everything works out and it does. And yeah, I'm really excited about this whole setup. Let's just check it out real quick and see what happens. Oh yeah. So that's what it's gonna look like once I put the screws in and get it mounted up. I think that looks awesome. Again, if you wanna see everything I've done with this Glock 17, check the description. I'll have a link to my blog showing you uh, everything I've done with it. So basically what I was trying to tell you guys is that the footprint is the same as the K series of Holosun sights which are typically more narrow but if you have a gun that's a double stack not like a single stack or a narrow gun you can do that cut on like a Glock 17 and mount up this sight alright so I need to get this thing mounted I need to take it to the range and uh, see how it shoots let's go do it All right guys, so after taking the EPS out and actually shooting it, I have to tell you that this thing is freaking awesome. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Um, I'm gonna tell you what I liked about it. I'm gonna tell you what I loved about it. And um, yeah, let's get into it now. So first of all, adjusting it was very simple. You just use the tool inside the box that it comes with. I had these Ameriglow sights installed by Boogeyman Customs when I sent out the slide, so they're perfectly centered. And the way I zeroed this optic is I just sat it on a table in my house, pointed at a white wall, and I just adjusted the dot and slaved it to the front sight. And then when I took it to the range, it was dead on so I didn't have to make any more adjustments from there. But it was really easy to do, just use the little tool to uh, adjust your windage and elevation. Now after I did slave it, I did check it at 15 yards and it was dead on. And 15 yards is what I choose for my red dot optics. Some people do seven yards, some people do 10, some people do the 25. I don't know what's best. I just saw some guy say 15 was a good one. <laughs> and um, it's worked well for me ever, ever since I've used it. Let me know what you use down in the comments or what you've heard is the best distance for a pistol optic. But like I said, I'm doing 15 right now. It's worked out well for me, never had any issues. 
And after I slaved the dot to the irons, that's what I checked it at and it was right on, which was perfect for me. Now, as I said before, this is the, uh, the reticle on this EPS is the 2MOA red dot. And I knew that would be good for me because I've used it before. I've used it on the 407C and I used the 2MOA dot on the 507K. So I knew I would like the 2MOA dot. Personally, I prefer red over green. That's personal preference. You might like green over red. But the cool thing is the EPS comes in both colors and it also comes with different reticle options. So you've got the two MOA options, which is what I like. You also have the six MOA dot versions in red and green. And there's a lot of people that like that size. I don't have any problem with it. I just like the two MOA a little bit better. And then you also have the uh, multiple reticle system versions, which will cost a little bit more. But those are like this, the 507K, where you have the circle, 32 MOA circle, the 32 MOA circle with the dot, and then the two MOA dot just on its own, which is actually what I'm running on this one. And those ones are cool for several reasons. If, you, uh, if you're new to shooting red dots, then having that 32 MOA circle with or without the dot in the center can be a really good thing because it helps you uh, acquire the dot and you might not be used to acquiring a red dot on a pistol. I just drop it in from the 12 o'clock position, drop the dot into the center of the glass and uh, that's been natural and worked well for me when I'm shooting these pistols with optics. But if you find yourself kind of fishing around trying to find the reticle, then maybe going with the circle dot reticle version might be the best thing for you because you can always change it. You got those three different reticles in programmed into the site, so you can change it down to the two MOA dot as you get better, or keep it on that larger reticle because it's a pistol anyway. So again, it's all personal preference. I like the two MOA dot. I like that it's a little bit cheaper too. <laughs> so that's what I chose to go with on this Glock 17. Um, reliability. So I've only taken this gun to the range one time, so I can't really speak about the reliability of this optic from personal experience. I can tell you I've used a lot of hollow suns in the past and I've never had any issues. I can also tell you that there's a lot of guys who beat the crap out of these things and and after seeing that, that makes me very confident in the durability that you're gonna get with the EPS. So I don't foresee any problems. Again, I've only used it at the range once. I'm gonna shoot this gun a lot because this is my favorite handgun right now but like I said I don't think there's gonna be any issues with it if there are I will definitely make a video about it and let you know but I think this thing is gonna be just fine and if you have any issues let Hollison know and they'll take care of you I had an issue where I lost the, uh, the little elevation cap one time I just emailed them and they sent me a whole bag of them so I was pretty impressed by that and I think their customer service is very good now those are all things that I like about this optic but I told you before there are a couple things that I really loved after using it and I want to talk about that right now so first of all I really love and I didn't expect this I really love how low this optic sits like look at the sight housing the bottom of it and and compare that to the 407 C and you can see it's a lot thinner it's even thinner than the 507K. I really didn't expect that to be a big deal at all. I liked that you could take lower sights like your stock height sights and co-witness through the optic. These Ameriglow sights are a little bit higher than standard Glock sights, but they still give me a lower, th lower one-third co-witness through the glass. And again, I will leave a link to my website which outlines everything I've done with this gun. So if you see anything that um, that you think is cool and want to do for your own gun, just go into the description and look up the Glock 17 build and uh, you can see exactly what I've done with this gun. But anyway, I thought running lower sights was going to be the main benefit of having this lower sight housing. But what I found when shooting these two guns side by side is that I could acquire the dot more naturally with the EPS than I could with the 407C. Now I'm still not exactly sure why that is but I think it's because this is a little bit lower. 
because seriously, with my 17, every time I would present it, the dot would drop in right there and be in the center of the, of the sight window, and uh, I didn't even have to think about it. What usually happens with my 45 is that I present and the dot is a little bit high in the window and I have to kind of adjust my hands down a little bit. And then I do that like five times and then it's on. So it's kind of an adjustment for me. That wasn't the case with the EPS and the, C and the G17. I would just present as I always do and the dot would be right there in the center of the glass. So again, I don't know exactly why that was. This is a Gen 4 versus a Gen 5. This is a 17 versus a G45. But I honestly think it's because the EPS sits lower on the slide um, than the uh, 407C does. Now another thing that I did not expect uh, to notice really, but I ended up loving about the EPS is the kind of square sight window that it has. I heard a guy say that he preferred the square sight window over the kind of rounded top sight window that you get on the 407 and 507Cs. And even though I've shot the 507K that has a, it's a smaller sight window, but it is squared, I never really thought about that before. But again, when I shot these two guns side by side, I don't know, I just liked the, the kind of box that the EPS sight window was more than I liked the shape of the 407C sight window. That could be personal preference, that could be just because I was excited about this new gun that I've had, but honestly I think that square shape is just more natural for my brain at least. Maybe for the human brain, maybe it's just my brain. I don't know. I like the box sight window over the kind of curved top sight windows that you commonly get on pistol optics. Again, I didn't really expect to notice that or think that was going to be the case, but that's one of the things I just noticed as I was shooting, shooting these two guns side by side. Now real quick, I will show you one of the targets I was shooting at um, the range. So not all of these groups are from the G17 with the EPS, but I can tell you this one was, this one was, this was the G45. Ooh, this one's a good one right here. And it definitely was. This one right here was definitely from the EPS and the 17. Um, these were at 15 yards. And uh, like I told you, it's a good sighting system and it was, and it allowed me to shoot very accurately. Most of these shots in the center here, by the way, I made this target um, just because I thought it would be fun. If you need targets, go to red.shooters.com slash targets and you can have these for free. Just You just go on there and, and print them off. And it's kind of a cool target too because you can focus on shooting in the big box or you can shoot at smaller targets. You can play games. Um, you can say, okay, I'm gonna shoot at one and eight this time. It's kind of cool. But anyway, these shots are from the uh, EPS with the G17. I think it was, I think this was at about 15 yards. And yeah, I was really happy with the whole setup. So yeah, I thought it performed really well for me, just an average shooter. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Alright, so that brings us to the end of this EPS review, and basically what I want to tell you is that the EPS is my new favorite pistol red dot. I love the features it comes with, I love that it's enclosed so I don't have to break out the uh, compressed air can all the time. I love how low it sits, I love the footprint. They went with the 507K footprint and there's a lot of uh, slide milling companies that are already doing that footprint. So it wasn't like a new footprint that they had to learn. And I like that because I like to direct mill my optics onto my slides if I can. But aside from all that stuff, I really love um, that it's still affordably priced. That's one of the things about Holosun I always liked. Considering what you get with this optic and considering how, how many people are searching for it, 
they could definitely charge a lot more money than they do for this site, but they don't. In my opinion, they keep the price reasonable and you're getting a lot of value for what you pay. So all this leads me to tell you that I highly recommend the Holosun EPS. I think it's a great pistol optic and for the time being, it's gonna be my go-to pistol optic. Now, if you do wanna get the EPS, they are starting to become a little bit more available. This one was kinda of hard to get. I had to wait and search and everything. Uh, but I will leave a link in the description below. Check it out, see if it's in stock. It is an affiliate link, so if you use it, it will help out the channel, so thank you if you do that. Aside from that, in the description and the pin first comment, you'll see links to my website outlining build lists for my Glock 17, my Glock 45, my Glock 48, and some other guns too. So if you saw anything on these guns that you liked and wanted to know more about it, check those links out and I tell you everything I did. So other than that, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope you'll come back for the next video. See ya.